Frank Balkin, my dear friend and COO of WPA, which is a great big agency. We're going to explore Frank's personal history. We're going to explore your personal experience, professional experience, obviously. And um, we're going to give you guys a lot of great knowledge. Hi, Frank. Hey, Gia. <laughs> Good Evening. to see you. <laughs> so, um, well, let's let's first start with your little personal history. How I got to being an agent? Yes. Okay. I had a different path than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of young men and women who decide to become agents. Mm -hmm. And many of them go to law school or business school, move to L.A., mm -hmm. some cases New York, and apply to a talent agency, mm -hmm. try to get into the training program. That was not my story. Um, like probably many young men and women, I, stu I started off in a more creative path. I wanted to be a writer. Mm. So I majored in screenwriting at USC and graduated. And I wanted to do two things. I wanted to sell my scripts. Mm -hmm. I also needed a day job. And I figured get a day job in the entertainment business. Wait, one second. Do you still write those scripts? No. Or? Okay. No. Okay. And you're very lucky that I don't. They weren't, <laughs> I'm much better in this job. <laughs> Producer I, friend, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I, I got different mm -hmm. bits of advice. Mm -hmm. Some people said get any day job you can. Just get something to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. A couple of mentors of mine said try to find something in the entertainment business. Try to make some connections. Try to learn how the business works. Mm -hmm. So the first few years after college, I did all sorts of entry-level jobs. I worked as a producer's assistant. I worked as a stage manager out in Santa Clarita Studios when they first built it. Mm -hmm. I worked for a producer who sold the rights to crappy US TV shows overseas. I worked for a post-production facility. I did temp at a couple of talent agencies Ultimately, I worked for a couple of producers. Uh -huh. I worked for two different uh, TV movie producers. As who? As a development assistant. Okay. okay. And then I worked for another producer. And then total honesty, I became an agent uh, not as a first choice because I wanted to get out of being an assistant. Yeah. And I heard about an opening at an agency for an agent, and I interviewed. Mm -hmm. So this sort of shatters all the young people who go through the training program and plan and figure out a strategy. I, one of the things I was going to say to, to the listeners is I think sometimes in this business you have to let your your career take you where it takes you. Yeah. I did not set out to become an agent. I fell into it five years after film school, and it ended up being the perfect thing for me. So you enjoy it? I enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. I, I find the job to be one-fourth salesperson, one-fourth attorney, one-fourth accountant, mm -hmm. and one-fourth psychotherapist. Every client needs different proportions of those. This is great for your personality. We know each other for a we while. We do. You yeah, know, I can do so most yeah. of the above yeah. in different ways. Yeah. They all have different needs. Mm -hmm. Some clients don't need that psychotherapy. They really just need someone pitching them, mm -hmm. following up on jobs, setting interviews. Some need a little bit more hand-holding. Mm -hmm. They're all different. But I found within the first year being an agent that uh, actually the person who recommended me for the job was a mentor of mine said it was my calling and he's absolutely right because it's something it's something I'm passionate about and even to this day I get up I, it'll be 25 years this summer I wake up in the morning and I'm excited I usually take a notebook I like to write notes out the old-fashioned way I grind fresh cup of coffee I sit with my notebook and I'm writing notes but I'm writing really confirm meeting with Gia call so-and-so about meeting with this person make this submission I, I get enthusiastic about it and I, I really I, I would hope for every young person I know they find a job they're passionate about. Yeah, definitely. 25 years in. For every one of you, yes. But th today we're going to talk particularly to those who want your kind of career. Who want to focus on becoming yes, an agent. Yes, I, I would really like okay. to kind of center around that. I think whatever a young man or woman wants to do in the entertainment business, first thing is see as many TV shows and movies as possible. Watch as much as you can. Read as many scripts as you can. Some people would tell you to have a critical eye. I don't always agree with that. When I was in film school, something that frustrated me a lot, I felt, and this might be just specific to me, that a lot of the students I went to school with would watch a movie or TV show and like defy it to please them. Yeah. I wanted to like things. There's probably no right or wrong here. It's just here. because you're that kind of guy. I'm more That's of a your personality. glasses half yes. full person. Yeah. But I do think as an aspiring filmmaker, agent, actor, casting director, mm -hmm. whatever, you should watch as much as you can and try to learn from it. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that even if there's a movie or TV show that you hate, there's something in it you can say, 
you know, I didn't love the story, but God, that one actor was great. Or something. Or I love how they use this location. Mm -hmm. Or I learned a lot. Some of mm -hmm. my favorite movies are movies or TV shows that take me into a place I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whether it's counterfeiting or nuclear reactors or just some part of the world I don't know about. So mm -hmm. I think there's something to learn from every movie and TV show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would also say, I think young men and women pursuing a career in this business now are so fortunate because there's so much behind the scenes material available, mm -hmm. whether it's documentaries about how things are made oh, or yeah. books. When I was in film school, there was a great book I read, which is out of print now called Hitchcock Truffaut. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a conversation between the two men. Oh, wow. It's Truffaut asking Hitchcock about every single, you can learn so much about filmmaking from that book. It's out of print, but if you guys can get it, you should. <laughs> Definitely. I am going to look for that book. Mm -hmm. I'll lend you my copy if I've got it. I've loaned it out a lot. I don't know. I may have loaned it out. Mm. It's a great book. Let's say young or not so young. It doesn't really matter. I believe in our industry, like age doesn't really matter. Okay. So uh, somebody who is trying to uh, become an agent. What should they do? Well, before we even get there, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that a lot of the people that watch us mm -hmm. are not in Los Angeles. Uh, maybe some of you are, but okay. like a lot of them might not be in the state even or not in the country, like right. some other countries. So um, what I always talk about, uh, I mean, uh, being a foreigner myself, mm -hmm. you, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes with it, like moving right. to LA, blah, blah, blah. I think a young person wanting to be an agent would have to move to a center of film production. Wherever it wouldn't they are. necessarily be Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but it could be Vancouver, could be Prague, just some place where a lot of filmmaking goes mm, that on. That makes sense. Yeah. I would think. If you live in the United States, I think you'd have to be in either LA or New York because mm -hmm. that's where the decisions get made. Mm -hmm. Things shoot in other places. A lot of things shoot in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. There's some small actors agencies there. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'd have to be in LA or New York. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot but of sense. But there's other places. There's yeah. Montreal, there's London. So Paris. they moved. Right. Then what? How do they start? I would probably try to get an entry level job at one of those agencies, mm -hmm. whether it's as a messenger, as a receptionist, mm -hmm. as an assistant. You want to get in there. You want to see how the business works and you want to meet the people. I think it's great too to try to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. I never had a specific mentor as an agent, but it is great if a young person or just, as you say, a person who's looking to get into this line of work can find someone who's in the business who's where they want to be. Mm -hmm. Not just career-wise, but the type of person they want to be. Right. Because it is, it is a tough business. And I've certainly seen talent agents who, I'm not sure their values now are where they started out. Mm -hmm. And I Why, think- Why, changes I think, people? I think sales professions bring out the worst in human beings. Oh. And it's not just talent agents. It's someone who works on a car lot. I, I just bought a car, had a wonderful salesperson. <laughs> but I think many times car dealerships become very competitive. Mm -hmm. I think the thing about sales professions is that you can be instantly evaluated. Mm -hmm. If you're a college professor, whether or not you're good can be somewhat subjective. If you're selling, if you're selling cars, if you're selling cosmetics at Macy's, if you're representing actors, the owner of a company can look at a, at a, at a, a piece of paper and say, we pay Gia Nordis this, she brings in this. Mm -hmm. Does she make sense or not? And I think many agents become very competitive with each other because mm -hmm. they can be instantly evaluated. Mm -hmm. That said, I've also worked with a lot of wonderful agents who are very collaborative with each other, who are good at identifying talent, are great at nurturing talent. Mm -hmm. I've met many agents that I've worked with who are good at being creative on selling mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think at our agency, I think one of the things that we do very well is work creatively to think, here's a client who is doing well in his or her, her career. How do we take it to another level? Okay, speaking of that, let's talk about your agency. What do you guys sure. uh, exactly do? Who sure. do you represent? Sure. Worldwide Production Agency represents producers, directors, cinematographers, costume designers, and editors. Mm -hmm. A few visual effects producers, first ADs, and stunt coordinators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are our, our, our focuses. We are pretty evenly split between commercials, features, and television. Mm -hmm. We have 12 agents in Los Angeles and three in London. Mm -hmm. Great. Agency's been um, in existence eight years. I came in about five years ago. Mm. So uh, how, how would the talent uh, apply? Mm. Most of our clients are referred by other clients, not necessarily in their same craft, sometimes in their same craft. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a cinematographer might recommend a friend who does the same thing. Often I've had referrals from clients 
of clients who they've worked with on shows who do something else. Mm -hmm. A cinematographer client does a series and the production designer on the series is dissatisfied with his or her agent. Mm -hmm. They'll say, oh, call Frank. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, sometimes we proactively will look up a person. If we like a movie or a TV show, we like the costumes, we like the cinematography. Headhunting. We, like we will do it. And there, you know that goes back to that ethical thing I was thinking yeah. about. Some agents I've worked with don't think twice about calling someone who's happy with his or her agent and trying to make them unhappy. Mm -hmm. I try not to cross that line. If I call an artist and they're happy with their representation, I say, well, here's my number, here's my email. If things change, we can talk. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'll call somebody and they'll say, I'm happy with my representation. And then they call a year later and say, yeah, you know, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I call and it happens to be, you know what, I think they're a good human being, but I, I'm not sure this agent opens enough doors, I'd like to come talk to you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, going back to the people who would like to become agents, mm -hmm. any specific um, personality traits? Sure. I think organization. I think empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, persistence. I mean, there is that stereotype of the agent who calls and harasses somebody who's not interested in a certain client. There is a middle ground between being that person and being meek. You can't be meek and be an agent. You have to be willing to call people you never talked to before. You have to be willing to call somebody who needs a director or producer, whatever type of client you're trying to, to place, and say, hey, you haven't met so-and-so. I'd like you to meet them. Mm -hmm. They'll ask you to tell. And, and part of it is knowing your clients. It's knowing what their selling points are. I always think a lot of being an agent is being a good listener mm -hmm. because you should be listening to the buyers, what mm -hmm. they're looking for. Mm -hmm. If they say we really want a woman cinematographer who's shot comedy, mm -hmm. and you send them a male cinematographer who's never done comedy, they're gonna think you don't listen. Mm -hmm. That's not to say you can't sometimes encourage them to look at somebody new or somebody outside the box, but listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Also listen to your clients. I, I Today I was having this conversation with somebody, a lot of jobs now that we book clients on shoot outside of where the client is based. In other words, a DP who's based in Los Angeles gets hired to do a show in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. You need to know which clients are willing to travel. Mm -hmm. If they're willing to travel, how far will they travel? Mm -hmm. If they're willing to travel, how long will they be away from home? Mm -hmm. We might have some clients who will go out of town to do a pilot or a movie, but not a whole series. And there might be another person who will go anywhere, anytime. I've had one or two clients over the years who said, send me away from my spouse. Oh. <laughs> it, it does happen. What are their names? <laughs> and that's not my job. I'm not a marriage course, counselor or relationship counselor. I work for them. If they say I want to, and sometimes it's very specific. I've had some clients who have a young child who say, I'll go out of town as long as it's somewhere with a direct flight to Los Angeles. I won't, I'm living in Los Angeles. I won't do Wilmington, North Carolina, because that's two flights to get home. I'll go to Atlanta. I'll go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they want to be in the same time zone. Mm -hmm. They say, I'll go to Vancouver because I can Skype with my family right. in the same time. And then some, and, and by the way, this changes. I was going to say, I think a, a very important thing for an agent that a lot of agents mess up. Once you sign the client, talk to him or her or email with them or text them regularly because their lives can change, their wants can change. Mm -hmm. You really, I think that's, that goes to empathy, which I was talking about as a quality I think mm -hmm. an agent needs to have. You need to be able to read people. Mm -hmm. You need to be good at conversing with people, get them to talk about themselves. Because mm -hmm. th you will meet um, artists sometimes will just say, bring me good projects. Mm -hmm. That's very subjective. I always ask new clients, is there something you don't like to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, there's, there's some clients who don't like horror movies. They don't like to watch them. They don't like to work on them. I can think of other clients who think they're a lot of fun. They're mm -hmm. very moody and atmospheric. Give them an opportunity. Ask the question. So we're talking about the clients who are actual talent right now. Right. What about the, the productions? How do you hunt for them? Mm. How do you find... Because that's what also constitutes a good agent, sure. right? Finding find, employment. Yeah. Sure. There's a few things we do. Like most agencies, we have a database of projects in development, projects in production, mm -hmm. projects in post-production. We regularly call the studios and production companies. I, I have a, a tracking system where if I talk to you, let's say Gio works at Universal Studios, and you tell me, I don't have anything today, but call me in six months, I might have a Western called The Frank Balkan Story. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in my, in my grid. I'll probably not wait the whole six months, because sometimes if I wait the whole six months, you'll say, oh, I've got my crew. 
but maybe four months and I'll call you. So we track projects. We have clients call us because they ran to someone at a party mm-hmm. who said, hey, I just got a pickup. I'm doing a, a one-hour dramedy. It's going to shoot in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So we get information from our clients. The buyers call us. The studios mm-hmm. will call us and say, hey, we just got this new pilot picked up. We need a line producer. Mm-hmm. So all of the above. It's mm-hmm. proactively tracking things. It's calling your studio contacts regularly. I believe in agents going out in the field a lot. Mm-hmm. I think... What does that mean exactly? It means not just sitting in your office, but when a client is filming a TV show or a movie, going to the set. Mm-hmm. It's easy if it's in L.A., mm-hmm. not so easy out of town, but we do try to get out of town. Maybe if we go to New York, maybe there's two or three clients shooting in mm-hmm. New York, so we're not making a trip just for one. But I think you learn a lot. I think that's how you learn what's going on around town. You become a warm body to the people who employ your clients. Oh, I see that. Yeah, You that get new clients, too. Yeah, that makes More a More than once sense. I've signed a client because I've gone to a set, Mm-hmm. And some other person on the show has said to their spouse, oh, so-and-so's agent came down. Huh. And the spouse says, your agent never comes by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'd yeah. be surprised. These things seem like common sense. Mm-hmm. Common sense, big thing for an agent. Not all yeah, of them have it. Yeah, I, you, you actually reminded me of something, too. I think one weak spot of a lot of agents, I don't think they put themselves in the client's shoes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is like, the whole secret to my success. But I think one reason I've done well at this is because I did start off wanting to be a writer. Mm -hmm. And there's some things I experienced where I sent scripts to people or they Mm -hmm. said they'd read it and they didn't. Obviously, none of us is an angel, but I do try to think how would I want to be treated? And I do think there are agents who don't look at it through the client's eyes. Mm -hmm. I used to work for somebody, I'll say who it is, and I thought his mistake was he didn't treat his clients as being as smart as he was. I've always assumed the clients are as smart as I am or much smarter. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of an example of what he did that would sort of illustrate that. One thing he did, he would meet with a new client and look at their resume. And he would tell them all the people they had, they had worked with that he knew. He'd say, well, I can call her. I can call him. What, what does that help the person? Mm-hmm. They don't need an agent to call the people they've already worked with. They need an agent to introduce them to new people. And that to me was just an example of not treating the client as being smart. Yeah, definitely. I think to myself in a meeting with a client, what do they want to hear? What do they need to hear? They want to hear, I'm going to open new doors. Mm-hmm. Need to hear is sometimes I have to give hard feedback. That's the less, the, one of the less fun parts of being an agent. Yeah. When you have a client, you have to tell them, well, on your last show, this is what they said. And that that is part of the job. Mm-hmm. I mean, agents all handle that in different ways. But I do feel... Um, part of representing someone appropriately is giving them feedback, good or bad. Hmm. Where do you get that information of, about the jobs available source at productions? Source of what's going source, on. Yeah, sure. meaning like we're, we're the projects. I know you said that you've got it, but sure. how do you get it? Uh, that's a fair question. Like everybody else, we do read Deadline, Hollywood, and Variety, and Reporter. You have to be careful treating those as gospel, though, because I think any of those sources, there's also a database that some people subscribe to called Production Weekly, the problem with all of those is some of the things they describe as in development are seven or eight years away from shooting if they ever shoot. They also all list projects that are so up and true. running. Yeah. There was something in Deadline Hollywood today about an actor being mm-hmm. cast in something. It's already fully crewed. Mm-hmm. It's up and running. We've got clients working on it. And then I had a client sending me an email, hey, this looks good. So we do use all those sources. Our data- database is mainly built by contact with studio executives. Mm -hmm. We each cover certain studios. We'll call those studio executives or email them and say, hey, what are the next few things coming up? Mm -hmm. And some of the studios will just send a list of things. Usually it's more of a casual conversation. They'll say, well, we're hoping to do a Resident Evil pilot in Vancouver in March. We have a series called Briar Patch starting in New Mexico in May. They'll rattle off them over the phone, and then we'll we'll write them down. We'll put them in. Yeah, database. you'll have your agenda basically. Yeah, yeah to to follow. Exactly. Hmm, interesting. Exactly, and I think um, at bigger agencies, you have multiple departments adding to that. You might have a production department like ours. You might have a literary department. You have a, an actors department. Although I think our database pretty much compares to anybody. But hmm. then you know these things get updated every day. Right. Let's say there's a pilot called man on the moon Mm -hmm. we might have in our database okay there's an hbo project called man on the moon gia nordis is producing it they hire a director he or she calls one of our dps and says are you available Mm -hmm. we get a call from that dp and they say oh sally jones just got hired to direct man on the moon we just add that to the database sally jones directing so all day long we're adding 
to our information. We go to lunches and breakfasts and drinks, and sometimes from those we get information. That actually makes a whole case for having an agent. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, an agency I worked with did something mm-hmm. interesting, which mm-hmm. I actually don't advocate. The first agency I worked at actually would provide clients a copy of that database. Mm-hmm. They had that database, and each week, one third of the clients would get a hard copy of it. Mm-hmm. This is pre email, this is 1994. They would actually send it to them. And the theory was that if you were a client of the agency, even if you didn't have a job, look at here's 140 pages of information you got. And then you could better assist us because you could call and say, hey, I, I found these yeah, 72 projects. Because... The problem is, number one, we had clients uh, asking about projects that they just didn't have the resume for. Number two, it had everything in development. It just had hundreds of projects. Oh, I see. It also, by the way, could work against us. Because like I said, the theory was at least the clients are getting information. Yeah. But then occasionally you'd have a client say, well, there's here's 900 jobs and you can't get me something. Why? You know, what am I paying for? So yeah, That client would be from so Texas? I, that's, a, <laughs> that's just a really bad imitation of a grumbly client. But I think, I think there is a balance between that and the agent who's just vague. One thing yeah, a lot yeah. of agents do this wrong is they call clients and say, yeah, yeah, I've got you up for a lot of stuff. Give some specifics. I don't necessarily go over everything I've submitted on, but when I talk to a client or email, I might go over two or three three things I'm pursuing. And sometimes there's some give and take. They might say, oh, you didn't know this, but I've never worked with that director, but our kids go to school together. Or, you know what, I've never worked with that producer, Mm -hmm. but you know what, Um, Mike Smith, who I just worked with, is best buddies with him and probably put in a good word. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason I think it's good for agents to regularly communicate with clients. Yeah, it's all about balance, right? So don't give them overwhelming amount of information, but don't keep them Give them enough specifics to realize actually some work is being done. Do managers have that kind of information? Some of them, sure. Okay. Sure. I think well-tied-in managers Mm -hmm. certainly have their own databases. Uh, I know that some agents do what's called uh, packaging. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do that? We don't at this time. Mm-hmm. We may grow into that. In the classic sense, what a, a packaging agency would do is put together multiple elements, mm-hmm. say a script, right. a director, and an actor. What packaging has devolved into is some of the larger agencies just to give a network or a studio a script says, we want a packaging fee. You know what? That's the only thing I've heard of. Yeah. I haven't heard the, the, the earlier version of yeah, it. Yeah. It, it, truly should mean putting multiple yeah, elements together. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes large agencies kind of bully their way into a, part, mm, a packaging fee. Mm, interesting. Because I, I, I always thought that would be like the nice kind of function of like being part of, like be, being uh, a, a talent rather represented sure. by a good agency. Sure. You would think that if I as an actor sign with William Morris Endeavor, that might create additional opportunities because they have directors and producers they can introduce me to. And sometimes that does happen. But there are times, too, where you're a writer with Endeavor, with Morse Endeavor. They send your script to ABC, and ABC says, we want to we want to buy the script. And Endeavor says, you can only have it if you give us a packaging fee, which is a little bit questionable because they're really supposed to just be working for the client. Mm-hmm. Well, if I come as a producer to you, Frank, and, and I need more than one of its talents. That rarely happens. It's okay. rarely the buyer driving. It's usually the agency saying, we want a packaging fee. Gotcha. I mean, for example... We will have clients say to us, well, I'm a cinematographer. Can't you go to a studio with me, a production designer, and a costume designer and say, here's your whole crew? doesn't work that way because usually when a a pilot or a movie gets Mm -hmm. started, a director comes in. They have their ideas. Oh, these these are people I've worked with before. They might call us about one. They might call another agency about another. Maybe their first three production designer ideas aren't available. But it's rare someone will call us and say, give us everybody. We'd love for that to happen. but. Gotcha. I have a very entrepreneurial nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so what if someone decides that they want to set up a talent agency? Mm. Where would they start? If, if someone wants to start a talent agency, I would strongly recommend he or she work for an established agency. I think it would be very difficult to, as a brand new person to the business, start a successful agency because the two things you need are clients and relationships with buyers. And I think it'd be very hard to open your door and have both of those day one, or at least have very good clients or very good relationships with buyers. I think a young person or a person looking to change careers would be well advised to work for a talent agency Mm -hmm. and learn how the business works, Mm -hmm. make those relationships, and then open an agency or open an agency with a partner. But I think it'd be very hard day one to open your own agency. Yeah. 
It seems like it. I have heard of people who did mm-hmm. that. The successful people I know all work for another agency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whether yeah. they started a small agency or whether they started an agency with five or six partners, it's just I think I think you would need to do one of those first. Yeah, you, you would have to have the extensive network. Right. That you can tap into. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So if I'm um, the industry professional, someone who would be represented by an agency like, you, like yours, how would I find an agent? Right. And what's the best way of working with an agent? Good questions. Finding an agent, I think probably look at the people in your field who are a little bit ahead of where you are and see who represents them. Mm-hmm. You know, two or three or four or five or a dozen clients have found me because, oh, I looked on IMDb and you represent Sally Jones and Joe Smith. And Somebody I want to be. Someone who's maybe a couple of steps ahead yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good starting point. People always have friends refer them to agents. I think the tough thing is there are a lot of agents out there, and I think most of them are pretty good. I think a few are actually outstanding at what they do. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's just chemistry. I think if you're a cinematographer and you put out four or five feelers of different agencies mm-hmm. and they'll all meet with you or three of them will meet, take all the meetings. See how you feel in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, someone once said, is this someone you want to have a beer with? I don't know that it has to be that social, but you do want someone who you feel you're comfortable with how they would be speaking on your mm-hmm. behalf mm-hmm. and someone you feel you'd be comfortable calling. Mm-hmm. How you work with an agent, one of the key things I tell people, especially when they haven't had an agent before, the biggest mistake some people make is they think once I have an agent, I shouldn't keep networking. You keep doing all the networking you've been doing before. Keep going to coffees with people and premieres and parties and screenings and you know lunches, all the, all the stuff. Just figure this is a partner in crime you're going to have. Mm-hmm. And I think you as a client will figure out pretty soon what's sort of an appropriate amount of contact. I've certainly had clients who maybe call more than they need to. And then I've had some who sort of fell off the grid and didn't call as much. I try to call every client every two weeks. I don't Mm -hmm. always achieve that. I try to call or text or email everybody every Mm -hmm. two weeks, whether they're working or not. I think you do want to tell your agent the major uh, bullet points. If you go to a party and someone asks about your availability for a project, tell your agent that. They should know that. Some clients will email with every single project that hits Deadline Hollywood. Don't do that. We mm-hmm. read that. We know the projects are out there. Yeah. Do tell us if there's a specific reason mm-hmm. to pursue for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw on Deadline Hollywood, Gia Nordis has a project picked up. You don't know this, Frank, but she and I went to college together. Or she's my next door neighbor. Or Gia's doing a project about scuba diving. I don't know if you and I have talked about it. I'm an avid scuba diver. That might be helpful to me. Just telling me there's a project and you need a job, I probably know that. Mm-hmm. I think... The other thing clients sometimes forget to do, uh, when you're a client and working, you should tell your agent what's going on on your set, good and bad. Mm -hmm. Do tell them how much you're enjoying being in Arizona or how much you like this producer you're working with or how much even better the film is turning out than the script, but also tell them the bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've had a client get let go off a show Mm -hmm. and I call him or her and they say, oh yeah, I got a warning last week. They weren't happy. Well, tell me that. Mm-hmm. I can take it and I should know it because then I can kind of keep an eye out that maybe you're going to be available earlier than planned. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking back but how to get an agent. The old the old sort of proverb was when you're ready agents will find you. But I think it's okay for growing filmmakers to query agents. I think filmmakers do need to realize that until you have credits an agent considers saleable he or she can't necessarily do something for you. I can't speak to actors' agents, but I know for the fields I represent, right. someone can be incredibly talented. A cinematographer can have a great reel, but if no one's familiar with most of the movies he or she has shot, we can't usually do a lot in the narrative world. I know in the commercial world, it's a little bit more about the reel, but in film and TV, it really is about the resume. So I do get queries from, say, camera operators who've done one cinematography job, and they're thinking, okay, I've crossed over. I usually try to be polite and talk with them and hang on to their information. I can't necessarily do something until they build more of a, of a book of work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always say that in the TV world, they want to say, we got the guy who, we got the guy who shot the X-Files. We mm-hmm. got the woman who did costumes for Desperate Housewives. We just hired the producer who produced Waco. Mm-hmm. They, uh, people want to be able to say to the other people involved, here's a credit that makes this person worth considering. So it's really hard if they've got good work but not not resume bullet points Mm -hmm. in television. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, agent or manager? I'm going to say agent. Um, <laughs> you know, agents are licensed by the state. Right. There's a little bit more regulation. Anyone can be a manager. I mean, tomorrow, any anyone you know who's an adult who's 18 or over can go become a manager because they're not licensed. They're a little bit more across the board. There's some managers who are good and some who are sketch. Um, managers might have another agenda because managers can produce as well as represent clients. So mm -hmm. there is that question, is a manager working strictly to find me employment or is he or she trying to get their own projects made? That said, I work with some excellent managers. I don't know that the crafts of people I represent all need both an agent and manager. Some of ours do, mm -hmm. and we work collaboratively with them. But it is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I would say as an, a growing filmmaker, if you're looking for representation, if there's someone you meet that you've checked out with people, and they check out well, and they seem to get you, go with that person. In other words, you're a cinematographer, you're a director, you meet two or three agents you don't click with, you meet a manager you do click with, maybe you do go with the manager. A lot mm -hmm. of it's just that personal connection, who you're going to feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. who you feel, this is a person where if I'm having a bad day on set, I'm going to call them and I can talk with them. Mm -hmm. And you feel it's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. You do have to be mindful. I think um, most of the clients I've worked with have been terrific. Occasionally there have been one or two who don't remember that there are other clients too. Right. I remember one person I represented many years ago who called and basically expected me to jump off of other calls to take his call. Mm -hmm. And one time I was on the call with a studio person who might have employed him, and he told my assistant, Frank should drop that call to take my call. I can't work with this person. Mm -hmm. The studio exec is harder to get on the phone. He, right. should want, he should want me on the phone with someone who could hire him. Right, exactly. So it's just, we're just on different planets. Right, right. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, what's, what's life like as an agent? I think it's all about time management. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be very organized so that I can return calls promptly, that I'm there to follow up on clients' meetings, stuff like that. You do meet a lot of agents who are very, who are stress cases. Mm -hmm. um, some maybe that's hardwired into them. Some ha maybe it's how they manage their time. I find it a very stimulating, invigorating profession. Mm -hmm. I think it can be very stressful if one doesn't manage time well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also think, just as I think as an artist, you have to accept that sometimes the stars just don't line up and you don't get a certain job, and it's not that you didn't give the best audition you could. As an agent, you also have to not beat yourself up that sometimes there's a client and you might do everything you can to find him or her employment, and it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I've always tried to be very respectful when there's a client that I can't deliver for and he or she goes to another agency. I don't think I don't think they did something terrible by changing agents. I think their career wasn't going the direction they wanted to. They're going to try something different. Mm -hmm. And that said, there are times where clients change agencies and I'm thinking I delivered for this person. Why? Sometimes it just happens. Mm -hmm. And that, you know that goes to you're asking what qualities I think an agent has to have. You have to have some resilience. Because you're going to have good and bad like surprises you know, as an agent. Meaning thick skin? Yes. You're and it goes for the, uh, the entire industry. You're going to have some yeah. client you sign, mm -hmm. and you think, wow, I'm not 100% certain. I think this person's going to do well. Mm -hmm. And the next month, you're going to book them on a great job, and they're off to the races. Oh. And then you're going to have some client. You're going to work your ass off, and you're going to get them a great job, and they're going to fire you and go to another agency. That's going to happen. Mm. And you try not to take it personally. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they come back. Sometimes they realize two years later, oh, well, I thought here was a shiny new object, but really Frank was the best agent I ever had. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't. And you you know, you know don't sweat it. You mm -hmm. have more than one client, and you figure things... You just, you just move on. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. what you do. You're very well organized. I know you for a while. And uh, I really love how you can balance being an amazing family person and an agent, you know. It's easier once you've been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I've been doing it long Early enough. on, was it like that? Probably not. I mean, now I feel like I have a great group of clients, and I do feel I have to prove myself every single day. Mm -hmm. But I feel like at this point in time, uh, my daughter's in the school play. Mm -hmm. If someone calls me as I'm walking into that, 
I can just say, I have to call you back in a couple hours and the earth is not going to stop turning on its axis. Yeah. Probably it will be fine. Yeah. And if the worst comes to worst, that client says, my Frank couldn't take my call. I'll live. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think part of it is just being mindful about it. I, I will say that one thing I do is when a client calls and it's not a good time personally, I'm at the gym, I'm going into a movie, I'm going to see my kid in a play. I usually won't go into detail because yes, some, some people might judge and say, well, he has time for his personal life. I just say, can I call you back? Mm-hmm. I don't go into detail. Part of that is just being mindful. Part of that's also having done this for 25 years. I know mm-hmm. what to do and what not to do. Mm-hmm. You also, I think like any other job, whether it's being a nurse or being a teacher or being a fireman, you do get better at time at this job. And I can read a lot of situations. Usually when a client calls me on the weekend on my cell, I have a pretty good sense why they're calling. Oh, this person's calling? He just needs his next job. Let that go to voicemail. Yeah, I can't do anything right now already. anyway. Yeah, yeah. This person's calling. This person I've represented 12 years. He's never called me on the weekend. This might be serious. You know, mm-hmm. you, you mm-hmm. kind of read the situation because you know the person or, or you just get a sense of it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure mm-hmm. it's the same thing as a director. I'm sure as you direct more and more, you're like, oh, I know what's going on here. Yeah, we'll see. I only directed once so far. <laughs> that puts you ahead of a lot of other people who want yeah, to direct you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that, bunch that, of you actually, that actually reminds me of another thing that I think is worth saying to all of your listeners, which is always be sure to give yourself credit for success. Hmm. This is a damn challenging thing we're all pursuing. And if you're a young actor and you've only acted in three movies, that's three more than the person who's acted in zero. If you're an agent and you have clients on four TV shows, you'd like to have clients on 40. That's four more than the agent who has no clients on anything. Always be, be a pre be grateful and also give yourself credit for the baby steps. Sure. 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 You do get better. at. I mean, I never thought I would be a director. It was, I remember that one came up kind of interestingly. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting story, but I mean, I've produced a bunch of things, but, um, um, after directing this feature, I actually kind of love it. Yeah. I think it can really do it. I mean, obviously, I've I've done this one, but like, I can do it as part of my career. Mm -hmm. Well, that that goes to kind of what I was saying earlier, which is you sometimes have to let the currents of your career, like a river, take you where it Mm -hmm. takes. I did not plan to be an agent, and I'll be very honest with you. I did not plan to be a a director. Yeah, took the first agent job. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd do it for a year and then go back to development or Mm -hmm. writing or something. I didn't think I thought it was too business ish. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know then that I know now. I didn't realize then that I'm more of a stability guy in terms of I like to go to the same office for years and years. Mm-hmm. Not everybody does. Most of the filmmakers I represent would go crazy go in the same office for I five be, years, six I, years. Yeah, no. But mm-hmm. I also, economically, once you figure out what you're doing and develop a book of clients, you have a relatively predictable year. I didn't realize when I was 26 years old that as a screenwriter, you might have a year where you make a million dollars, another year you make zero. That's not how I'm built. I'd rather make way less than a million, but know what I can count yeah. on. That's just how I'm built. And I think everybody needs to figure out what kind of is important to them. Mm-hmm. And everybody's built differently. I think I think many of the people I'm friends with in other fields would not be happy in my job. Mm. And I think many of my clients, it's just not how they're oriented. I think I think you you have to sort of let the currents of your career take you where they will. Going back to you know, how one gets started. I think in addition to watching movies and TV shows, I think anyone who wants to be an agent, a good thing would be read books, listen to podcasts, read interviews about the business side of the business, how projects get sold, how people get hired. Any other advice for people who want to be agents? I don't think there's anything else I can recommend other than reading the books, studying movies and TV shows, uh, reading people well. I mean, one general bit of advice I give everybody starting out is let networking be a fun process. Part of any career in this business is networking, going to events, going to lunch. Try to enjoy it. I know for some people it's very stressful and daunting, but I always say people say the the secret of show business is it's not what you know, it's who you know. But the other secret is you can make those connections. I, I didn't grow up in the business. My, mm-hmm. my family was in totally different fields of work. But I came out here, and, and you might say, yeah, I went to USC film school, but 
all the work I've generated has been through knocking on doors and sending resumes. Mm-hmm. There aren't film school buddies of mine. I couldn't who agree me more. Out. I couldn't agree more, Frank. The the this is the whole thing. Uh, the, 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 everything I've done, I've done because I'm really good at networking. Everything I've done. Um, I mean, I'm not that I'm not a good professional. Of course, that 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 goes without saying, right? right? That has to be there. But um, if you want to get anything done, you have to learn how to really truly network and it, it cannot be artificial it cannot right. be like you know surfacey thing it has right. to be actually genuine and i always tell people it should be reciprocal mm-hmm. it shouldn't just be what can the other person do for you be a resource to exactly them. a lot of our line producer clients mm-hmm. the way a lot of jobs come is we will send them on a meeting with a studio exec and the studio executive will say oh you worked in wilmington north carolina we're thinking about doing a project there and it's not just my client asking them for a job it's my client saying oh i can tell you about wilmington i can tell you who to hire there i can tell you who to stay away from Mm -hmm. i can tell you which stages are better i can tell you which locations work well for Mm -hmm. us be a resource to the other person if you're a young actor trying to get work Mm -hmm. and you meet a young cinematographer on a short film help them you help them get work they may help you get work and just do it anyway Mm-hmm. Putting good karma out there can only help you, right? I couldn't agree more. Yeah, definitely. And it also like people will, uh, people will keep you in mind. And in this industry, you never know who's become what tomorrow. Yep. Yep, it does happen. I'm a, a natural person who ties people together. The other day, someone asked me if I had a good handyman. And I recommended someone who's done work for me in the past because he's good. And that just makes me feel good. I'm not taking 10% of that. Yeah. But that makes me feel good. And that's... Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's exactly how it works. Well, Frank, this has been fascinating, very informative, and I absolutely love to have you here. Thank you so much. I hope I've been helpful. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> You're amazing at what you do, and you can be amazing at what you do. And have fun and enjoy the journey.